Sorry, folks. <laughs> Once more around the park. Can't be done, sir, if the young lady's going to catch that train. Well, the uh, Grand Central Station, then. And no shortcuts. All aboard! All aboard! Say, mister, we got a timetable. Oh, just one more minute, please. There's another train leaves in two hours. Maybe you better take that. Won't you young watch yourself? Lady, not that young. All aboard! All aboard! Goodbye, Lila. Oh, Freddie, I wish you were coming with me. I could use a little of moral support. Well, just as soon as I close this bank deal, I'll fly home and we'll be married. Oh, I hope your mother and I hit it off. Of course you will, darling. She's a rare old girl. That's just what worries me. I do a little rearing myself. Oh, no, stop worrying. You'll love it at mother. All aboard! And this time, I mean it. <laughs> Goodbye, Lila. Goodbye, Freddie. I know mother will be pleased when she sees you. I hope you realize I'm not marrying your mother. That's what you think. My dear. I wasn't sure. Frederick's descriptions are always so flattering. Well, I knew it was you the moment I saw you, Mrs. Lennon. Well, jump in, my dear. Thank you. Good afternoon, Peter. Put the bag on the floor. Would you mind blowing those smoke rings out of the window? I'm allergic to them. I'm so sorry. Young man, Jay Walking is a menace to motorists. Obey the traffic laws. Frankly, my dear, after having seen you, I'm not at all sure you're the kind of girl Frederick should marry. You're much too beautiful. Brains and character so seldom go with a lovely face. And you are lovely. Thank you, but... Don't you think you're judging me rather hastily, Mrs. Lennon? Perhaps. We shall see, my dear. We shall see. I'm going in here for a minute. Won't you come in? It's been a Saturday afternoon. The bank's closed, isn't it? Of course it's closed, but it's my bank, isn't it? Or Frederick's, I should say. Come along. Nice bank. We've never had a run. Hey, good, Frederick. Yeah. Who's the young lady? Well, that's the girl I was engaged to last year. We had this taken when she came to visit me. Lovely girl. I wonder why Frederick never heard from her after she left. Oh, thank you. This is Miss Thorne, Brewster. Her baggage is in the car. Put it in the west bedroom, directly across from me. Very good, madam. Right this way, my dear. You're really a godsend to me. My secretary had to visit her mother. I suppose you do excellent stenographic work. Well, uh, could I... Uh, I mean, I haven't even got my hat off yet. Oh, well, take it off by all means. Thank you. 
Mm -hmm. I shall have to take this up with Mr. Zambrosio at once. He's charged me two dollars a dress instead of a dollar seventy-five. Sit down, please. Take a letter? But Mrs. Leonard, I don't type. How oh, very surprising. I suppose you write fairly legibly. Oh, yes. Yes, I have rather a high IQ. Oh, come, come on here. I want to get this off immediately. My dear Mr. Zambrosio, I have just received your bill. And I am surprised to note that you've raised your prices 25 cents. In view of our 19 years association... Just a moment, please. In view of what? 19 years association. Don't you think this step a bit drastic? Don't you think this step a bit... Drastic? Question mark. I'm sorry to inform you, Mr. Zambrosio, but if this continues, I shall be forced to sever our business relationship. Sincerely, Hattie Leonard. Where is he? Well, Mr. Zambrosio? Good morning, Miss Leonard's lady. Nice a day. Sit down. Congrats. You got my letter, of course. Yes, ma'am. And it's making me feel very bad. I said to my wife, Angela, for 19 years... Sit down, please. Congrats. Isn't the chair comfortable? Oh, it's a fine. I said to my wife, Angela, for 19 years, me and Mrs. Leonard, we do business together. And just for her, nobody else, I make it your price. One dollar is 75. Sit down. Yes. I don't like bargains. What made you raise your prices? Well, you see, I got my expenses. Every Wednesday, a man, he come and he gets a seven dollars. He's from the Protective Association. Protective Association? Whatever do they protect you from? I don't know. But the tunnel, he no pay. And somebody broke his window, steal the clothes, and beat him up. So, I pay. I can hardly believe it. Oh, yes, Miss Leonard Lady, it's the truth. This association is a very good thing. Mm. Lala. Give Mr. Zambrosio two dollars. Oh, no, please, Mr. Leonard Lady. As long as you continue to belong to this protective association, I will pay your increased prices. Thank you. When did you say their uh, representative called? Uh, every Wednesday, 11 o'clock, uh, on the dot. <laughs> Thank you. I get up now, yes? Oh, yes, yes. yes. Thank you. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Leonard, lady. Goodbye, Mr. Zambrosio. Lala, my engagement pad. Ambrosial shop, Wednesday, 11 o'clock. Yes, sir, Mrs. Leonard, lady. 11 o'clock. On the dot. Lila, wait for me here. Buongiorno, signora. Vincenzo! Miss Leonard, lady, when you come in my place, it's a bigger day. <laughs> my goodness, how he's grown. I brought him a little present. Come and bear, le grand, le grand. Hey, ravioli. Hey, mama. Mm -hmm. You got that suit for me? Sister. Come on, this is my busy oh, day. Oh, oh, oh. Excuse me, please. Is he the gentleman from the association? Yes, ma'am. He calls himself a Harry the Log. Mr. Log, may I have a word with you? What about? Hey, hurry up with that suit and give this one a light once over. You might have the common courtesy to come out here while I'm addressing you. Come on, Toots, spell it. Toots. Please, he don't like to talk business. Mr. Lug, 
from exactly what and whom are you protecting, Mr. Zambrosio? Ravioli, who is this screwball? Why don't you go peddle your fish? Miss Leonard, lady, please, he's a nicer man. He's a disreputable, suspicious character. Now, look, I don't want to have no trouble with you. Come on, pay up. I forbid you to pay him one solitary cent. Well, I'd like it to pay. It's all right. Don't you dare, Mr. Ambrosio. You're wasting my time. That ceiling, take your hand out of there. Lady, you're going to make it awful tough for him. You're a thief. An undesirable citizen like you ought to be in jail. Yeah, and an old hen like you ought to be home laying an egg. Mr. Zambrosio, you, you report this to the police at once. Please, Mr. Leonard, lady, I need a protection. Don't I leave Tolo the cop and he's place to get his mesh. If you don't report it, I will. Mr. Leonard, lady, please, no Tolo the cop. Don't do nothing. Everything is anche <laughs> Please. Mr. Zambrosio, mind your business. I love to the city hall. Harry. Glad to see you. Tommy Jones, do you know that Macklin City is a dreadful place to live in? Do you know that we have the... Harry, just a moment. Calm yourself. Sit down. What kind of a mayor are you, anyway? I've been too busy the last 20 years to know what's going on. I'm just beginning to find out. But, Harry, will you please sit down? Cool yourself off. How have you been? Don't you try to butter me, Johnny Jones. Stamp out these frightful rackets. Harry, must be some better way for you to occupy yourself than telling me my business. It's my business to be a good citizen. Yes, but I happen to be the mayor. I promise you I'll clean up these rackets in my own way at the proper time. Rome wasn't built in a day. While you're building Rome, Johnny Jones, poor Mr. Zambrosio and his friends are paying tribute to this dreadful Mr. Lug. Very well. If you won't do anything, I will. And right now! Hey, you trumped my ace. Oh, why do I keep doing that? The minute I pulled it, I knew it was a fatal mistake. Mind if I watch? No tippets is allowed. Beat it. Oh, hello, Mr. Leonard. Hello, Fallon. You in town? Can I see you a minute? Sure. How's your old... I mean, uh, how's your mother? Herself, as usual. She wants you. Me? Hey, here's a wire I got from her. Oh, gee, Mr. Leonard, I ain't done nothing wrong. Grabbing the old lady's purse was the last job I ever pulled. Why, me and the mob ain't even been on speaking terms since she gave me a chance to go straight. What you want me for? Now, where my mother's concerned, Frankie, it's a case of ours not to reason why. Ours but to do and die. Huh? Well, anyway, I'm on my way. Back on the iron horse, old felon. Oh, listen, coppers. This time I got the keys to the city. Mrs. Hattie Leonard sent for me. Yeah? What for? Gee, I'm just as bewildered as you are. Why don't you come up to the house and find out for the both of us? We'll be watching you, Frankie. Hey, get a load of the cut of that back. Very nice, very nice. Not bad, not bad at all. Say, doing anything tonight, babe? No. No, I'm confined to quarters. Yeah? What did she get you grabbing? Her son. A snatch? That's tough. Oh, but don't you worry. She won't cause you no trouble. No? No. She caught me lifting her pocketbook and wound up buying me a taxi cab. Frankie? Ready? Where to, lady? My servants call me madam. Gee, that don't hardly sound respectable. You will drive to Wim Street. You will enter the dry cleaning establishment of Mr. Zambrosio. A certain Mr. Lug will arrive at promptly 11 o'clock. 
You will, if necessary, beat him unmercifully. But do not let him take seven dollars. Mrs. Leonard, I don't want nothing to do with no gangsters. I didn't think you were chicken-hearted, Frankie. Oh, gee, it ain't that, lady. Madam, I'll murder him, but it don't sound ethical. Nevertheless, you will carry out my orders at once. Come with me, Lila. Have the car at the door in five minutes, Thorndyke. Thorndyke? I never did like him, old Fallon. Thorndyke. Another alias. I can hardly wait for that most despicable Mr. Lug to arrive. Last Wednesday, I tried reason. This Wednesday, I'm using force. It's the only language the underworld understands. There he is now. I hope Thorndike won't be too brutal. What's, what's that? The ambulance, of course. I arranged for it before I left. Nobody selling tickets, lady. I'm Mrs. Leonard. All right, stand back. Thorndike! It was a complete surprise to me, too, madam. Stand back. All right, now break it up. Come on, break it up. Thorndike. Where did he strike you? Right behind the cash register. I'm afraid you're not entirely adequate. Oh, please, madam, give me another crack at him. All I ask for is brass knuckles. I wonder how one goes about acquiring henchmen. You mean a, a mob? I believe that's what you call it. <laughs> it's a sense if you got connections. Say, madam, you ain't taking a... Thorndike, get me a mob. Oh, madam, please don't make me do it. I should have took the rap instead of letting you buy me a tax. And while you're about it, order me half a dozen machine guns and an armored car. <laughs> Look, Mr. District Attorney, I know you guys are tabbed me. So when the old dame asked me to get her a mob, six coffee grinders and a tank, I says okay, but I beat it right down here to see you. What do you want me to do? I'd like to see the old battle axe run them all out of town. Well, couldn't you just please put it in the can? Only for a little while. Just long enough for me to take a powder. Oh, Fallon, I want you back in my office tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. All right, gentlemen. I gotta see my lawyer. What are you pulling us in for? You got nothing on me. You ain't gonna rush me around. What's the charges? I ain't talking, see? We've been framed. And if I did do anything, you can't prove it. I got a witness. Keep your shirts on, boys. You're all in the clear. Oh, yeah? Oh, that's it right. must be a lot of trouble for you men to report to the probation officer every week. I should say it is. How'd you like to wash yourselves up with the law once and for all? Sounds okay to me. Wait a minute. What do we gotta do? I want to swear you in as special deputies. What? You want us to be cops? You mean turn copper? That's right. Oh, no, none of that. No. You'll be assigned to Mrs. Hattie Leonard and take your orders from her. Nobody knows you're actually members of the police department. Not even Mrs. Leonard. How about it? I, uh, I think we'd better talk it over. Good idea. Make it snappy.
Do you solemnly swear to support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the state? You, what are you winging about? I ain't winking. Well, that's an affliction he got from the beef state gang. Yeah. It better be. And faithfully discharge the duty of deputy sheriff according to the best of your ability? I do. I do. I do. Pin the badges on them. She's taken up crime. No, no, you're just making a mountain out of a molehill. Mother usually knows what she's doing, and as long as you still love me... I must dare to last this long. Well, then that's all that matters. And there's nothing to worry about. Remember, the hand is flickered in the eye. Freddy, they've come for her. They're gonna take her for a ride. What do you want? I'm Fred Leonard. So what? Beat it, beat it. Look here, I'm, I'm gonna hang around here for anyhow. Who's them all? Who are you? What's it to you? Get out of this house. Take it easy, buddy. If you don't leave this house at once, I'm gonna call the police. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna call the cops. Yeah. I certainly am. <laughs> Sit down. Here, figure What's the matter? Oh, well, why, Scott? Oh. Come on. Don't you get her, you Liar, keep out of it. Come on, come on. He's a guy. Oh, my God. Frederick! Frederick! I don't think this is very hospitable of you. These gentlemen are my guests. Excuse me. I didn't know. That's all right, pal. Skip it. I didn't expect you home until next week. I'd like you to meet my friends. Gentlemen, this is my son, Frederick. Frederick, this is Bert the Beetle. Howdy. Big time, Tim. How do you do? Mr. Brains Logan. Gotcha. Blinky Mac. Ah. And the Canary. Hiya. Oh, and I almost forgot. His fiancée, Miss Thornton. <laughs> Charmed. Likewise, Edna. Hello. They're staying with us for a while. Come, gentlemen. Rooster will show you to your room. See you later, huh? I wouldn't be a bit surprised if I wake up dead tomorrow morning. Hey, Junior. Very good, sir. What are you doing that for? Oh, it clears me head out, but but it makes me eyes water. Yeah? Did you ever smell it? No. Try it. No. What are good. you trying to do, blind me? That reminds me of one eye chomps in a night or two in a barrel of concrete and he ain't been hoi from since, so that's the truth. <laughs> you and me, lady, we both eat like boys. Yeah, vultures. Hey, that ketchup costs 40 cents a bottle. And it's worth it, too. Messed it again, honey. Slide the grease, lady. The grease, lady! The grease! The grease! The grease. The grease. The grease. The butter, lady. One minute, gentlemen, if you'll just take your time. Oh, no, you don't! Have I done anything wrong, sir? Never speak up me that way. See, I don't like it. It gets me kind of excited. Very good, sir. I bet you finna do it this time. Bet, bet you, you find don't. it out. I did it! He did it! He did it! What's the matter with her? Oh, no plan. Thanks, Keep on eating. Uh, Lila, too. I'm going home. Well, please don't be. Freddie, I may be descended from gorillas, but I don't have to know them socially. Well, they won't be here long. I'm going to tell Mother a thing or two right away. Uh, shall I serve you in your room, Miss Thorne? I couldn't eat a thing. Brewster, where's Mrs. Leonard? I don't know, Miss. She left early with Thorne. Lila! I'll talk to her right now. Lila! Mother, what's the matter? Morning, children. Bulletproof. Does 90 in second. Watch this. Step on a thorn dike. What in the world? Just a snappy little number I picked up. Look at this. No, no, back there, back there. If the smoke don't get them, the tax will. Mother, don't you think we ought to talk about all this? Of course we should, Frederick, but I'm frightfully busy right now. You run along and mind the bank for me. We'll have a nice heart-to-heart -heart chat directly after dinner. Come along, Thorndyke. Well, you certainly told her a thing or two. 
Well, after all, Lila, this may all be a harmless fancy. Take a peek at those harmless fancies in the back. Well, this is off. Well, Freddie, you said you'd speak to her. I know I did, Lila, but you can't speak to Mother just like that. Now, look, dear, let me think about this for a while. I'll find some way to make her stop whatever she's doing. But just give me a little time. Well, I suppose I'll have to. But I warn you, I will not marry into a family with a record. <coughs> what do you think that picture's weight? Oh, about uh, seven and a half bucks. Don't be a chump. That paint alone ought to be worth 15 smackers. Hey, do you think that's a picture? Get a load of the ventriloquist here. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning Mrs. Good morning. Morning. Sit down. Sit down. Thorndike has explained the financial arrangements. I trust they'll be satisfactory. Sure, lady. But what are we getting paid for? There's a racket in this city. We hide rumors. I'm going to stop it. And you're going to help me. Well, what kind of a racket? Who's running it? A certain Mr. Lung. Harry the Lung! It ain't him, lady. He's collecting for somebody else. Who? We'll tail him and find out. Tail him? He means follow him, madam. Then what? We'll call the cops. No, I'm afraid we can't do that. That's why I hired you. Okay. So first we throw the bluff. I beg your pardon? Crash the gate. Then we tell him we're muscling in. Muscling in? Moving in on their territory. We'll give him 24 hours to take it on the lamb. On the lamb? Make himself scarce. Very well, gentlemen. We shall tail the lug. Come along. What's the matter with you? I don't know. I got a funny feeling all day like I've been tailed. Here. You know lady with the mob? Okay, boss. We'll look into the matter. Oh, uh, where do we locate her? Right here. That's her. The loony. The one I was telling you about. Yes, the shipments will be made as usual. Goodbye. You are Mr. Watson? That's right. What can I do for you? I'm a peace-loving woman. I think it only fair, before I adopt more drastic measures, to give you a chance to stop these rackets and find some honest means of employment. Ain't she crazy? Well, I'm sorry you don't like the way I run my business, lady. Funny, none of my clients make complaints. Don't quibble, Mr. Watson. It is either yes or no. Lady, you're asking me to give up my career. Very well. I gave you your chance. Now, take a tip, lady, and throw those stumble bums back in the ash can. And you, well, you better go back to your knitting. Mr. Watson, I am taking over. I am muscling in. I give you exactly 24 hours to take it on the skidoo. I'm practically on the train. And if I catch you in this vicinity tomorrow? Yes. I'll blow your head off. Haven't we overlooked something? Suppose they don't take it on the land. We gotta start shooting. Isn't that a little primitive? I've got it. We hijack him. Every time one of those monkeys collects seven smackers, we take it away from him. That's a lot of nickels. She gets half, and the rest of us share and share alike. Nix, we give it back to the merchants. That really wasn't worthy of you, Brains. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot we were doing this on the cuff. Hijinxing seems to be an excellent solution, especially since I'm sure they won't be expecting us. Gentlemen, we shall catch them with their coats down. Aaron Ardbuck, 443 Bell Street. 443 Bell Street. Thank you. 
There's the luck. Remember, lay off. He's for me. like I told you. I was just gonna be victorious when some rat sneaked up and struck me from behind. Oh! I'm all tied up in knots. Maybe I'm gonna stay that way. Nonsense. Take off your shirt. I can't. Oh! Lila, the liniment, please. Oh, Marge. Marge. Oh! Thank you. Oh, that's good. Not there, not there. A little lower, madam. Uh, now, just a little bit to the right. Ah, uh, there. You got it, you got it. That's the spot. Oh. Marge. Oh, Marge. Lady, lady, I think he's got brain fever. Oh, him? That's impossible. Lala, there's a thermometer on the table. Take his temperature. Oh. Gee, madam, that's heavenly. When are you coming back to me? Open your mouth. Marge! What happened? Mrs. Leonard, I'm leaving. Goodbye. Lila, where are you going? Home. I've been packed for days. Freddie, if you can't handle an old lady, you certainly couldn't manage me. Dear. Let him in, Brewster. Uh, yes, madam. I... What's this? Uh, my two weeks' notice, madam. We want to talk to Mrs. Leonard. Well, who shall I say is calling? Never mind. Come on, Mrs. Ambrosio, I'm so glad to see you. I don't believe I know all your friends. Well, we represent the cleaners and dyers in Macklin City. We demand... Tea, Brewster? Uh, uh, yes, madam. Ma we don't want a tea, Miss Leonard, lady. We want to talk! Every fixture smashed and five well, payments. He's got yet. convulsions and my wife ain't even... 34 the cash customers cancel their account. First time I've missed a delivery in 14 years. All my windows smashed and everything upside down. Miss Leonard, lady, it's got to stop. You are so right, Mrs. Ambrosio. I will fight this through if it takes... No, 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 Miss Leonard, lady. It's you. You got to stop. Miss Leonard, lady, please, we want to pay the seven dollars. You got to lay off of Watson. Please, you got to quit or we all going to be bankrupts. Give us a break, lady. Just a fair chance so we make a couple of dollars so we can feed our kids. That's all we want. Please, gentlemen, please. I've listened to you now. Will you listen to me? First, I'm... Very sorry, your shops have been damaged. 
Please send me all bills. You mean to say you're going to pay for all the damage? Yes. Millions for defense, but not one cent for tribute. Well, that's a very nice, Mr. Leonard lady. But I don't worry no more about the bills if I am laying in my coffin. Since when have Americans been afraid to die? You are American. Sure, I am. He's like in the paper. You see that man? He was at Bull Run. His father was at Valley Forge. It wasn't easy being an American then. It isn't easy now. It takes pride and strength and courage. The one thing a real American has never tolerated and never will tolerate is a dictator. Can't you see that's what Mr. Watson is trying to become? Mr. Watson doesn't believe in your inalienable rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Mr. Watson doesn't want a government of the people, by the people, or for the people. Abraham Lincoln. Don't let any Mr. Watson take our America away from us. Don't let him frighten you into selling your birthright. No matter what he says or what he does, don't surrender. There's one thing I'd like you to do for me. The next time one of his hired ruffians demands seven dollars, don't give it to him. Take a beating if you must, but don't give it to him. For one day, I'd like you to really be American. And say, give me liberty or give me death. Patrick Henry. We'll tell him. Nobody gonna push us around. This is a free country. We're with you, Mrs. We'll Leonard. Fight him to a finish. Three cheers for Mrs. Leonard! <laughs> Yeah. Rooster, I thought I ordered tea. Immediately, madam. Hey, come out of there. What are you afraid of? I'm not afraid. I'm just careful. Mother, this must stop. You'll get these people killed. And if you don't put an end to this whole stupid business at once, for your own sake, I'm going to ask the state to give you a sanity test. Why? You'll do nothing of the sort, Freddie. She's absolutely right. Thank you, my dear. Oh, but Lila, a few minutes ago A few you... minutes ago, I didn't know what a bad American I was. But I'm right with you, Mrs. Leonard. Please. I don't know if my mother's crazy, but if she is, you're catching it from her. And as far as I'm concerned, you can both go jump in the lake. I'm a little disappointed in Frederick. Well, what do we do now? Now we gotta start shooting. Yeah. That's just what we're gonna do! We'll blow them up. Well, we'll do nothing of the sort. Lila, help me collect the gentleman's firing arms. Gats, I mean. Oh, oh gee, lady, I feel kind of naked. Now, gentlemen, weren't any of you ever in a racket? I was. To beg as an apple woman's protector. Think hard, Thorndike. What made you go out of business? Well, we folded when they arrested the big shot. Mr. Watson, you mean? Oh, no. Watson's only a stooge. Just like Harry the Lug. I mean, the guy that was protecting us, handcuffing the cops. There's always a higher up. And Mr. Watson would know who he was. Sure, but he's too smart to spill it. Of course, of course. But one would hardly call Mr. Lug a mental giant. That's him. That's the guy. That's the snake we want. Would you mind, my dear? Please, please, please. We, we have some business to discuss. Yes, but if it's all the same to you, I'd like to stay. Very well. Mr. Lug. I'm sorry I wasn't in when you called yesterday. Sure, any friend of Joe's is a friend of mine. How about tonight? Tonight? Why, yes. I wouldn't appear too anxious. Uh -huh. Joe said you were a fast worker. Take it easy, big boy. Don't rush me now. You know you'll last longer. You're superb, my dear. Well, that's the way I am. You sound like the McCoy, so I'm for you. Come on, meet me tonight at the Black Kitten. I'll pay the taxi. <laughs> Joe said you were a sport. Well, sugar, if I get too lonesome, I might drop over. So long now. <laughs> How did I do? My 
Yeah, I'm proud of you. <laughs> You're amazing. Amazing. Joe really picks them. Joe who? Who cares? I'll be in the barber shop. He wants me to meet him at the Black Kitten. I know, I think I'll wear that slinky black satin. I'll try it on right now. Now look here, Lila. Good morning, Freddy. She's not going. I heard every word. You shouldn't eavesdrop, Frederick. Very clever. Encouraging her to do something drastic just because we had a little lover's quarrel. I don't be able to listen, Frederick. Lila's old enough to know what she's doing. And you're old enough to be a grandmother. Now, I didn't care when you broke off my engagement to all those other girls, but I really love this one. Now, you stick to your rackets or... or I I'll sue you for alienation of affection. Front seems to be all right. Turn around. Oh, no, no. The back could be more, um... Open. Well, I could have worn a bathing suit. Please, this is a very serious matter. Now, let me see you walk. Walk? Yes, walk. You must get that certain swing, I think they call it. Oh. <laughs> How am I doing? Not at all. Not at all. Like this. <laughs> Mrs. Leonard. <laughs> Kim, you stay here and keep a lookout. Oh, my bad. Give me a boost. There they are. What are they doing? Indulging in a little repartee. What, already? I never would have believed it. Lady, hey, lady, come. Yeah. Wait. I drink he would. Whatever will she do now? There's Frederick now. She sees him over Mr. Lug's shoulder. Uh, do you mind checking my wrap? Sure. She's asking Mr. Lug to check her coat. He's getting up. He's leaving. Good girl. Here comes Frederick. Oh, I think he wants her to leave with him. She won't leave. They're arguing. Oh, Freddy's getting very difficult. What if Mr. Lund should return? She's beckoning to someone. Someone large and athletic looking. The bouncer. Lila points to Frederick. Frederick's arguing with him. Frederick points to Lila. She shakes her head. Oh, dear, whatever will she do? Oh! What happened? That person just struck Frederick. That's fighting. Frederick strikes him back. I didn't think he had it in him. He strikes him again. He strikes him again. Frederick's down. He's up. He's down. He's up. He's down. Put me down. What happened to Mr. Leonard? Home with him! Oh. What happened? Ah, oh, just a couple of drunks. Let's you and I get out of here. Okay, Toots. Mr. Lug has come back. He's putting on a coat. He offers her his arm. They're leaving. Put me down. You're wasting your time. Why don't you mug stop annoying me? I give up. The guy's an iron man. We give him the hot foot, the holes, and the screws. And he won't squeal who's protecting him. How about us walking him, turning the light in his eyes, blowing in his face, and yelling at him? I have rarely seen such inefficiency. We still ain't showing him the red-hot poker. That'll make him sing. Mr. Lug, 
I'll give you one more chance to divulge the identity of your higher up. <laughs> right away, my dear. Mr. Lug, I'll go to any lengths to find out who he is. Lila, here you are. No. No, not that. Anything but that. Please. No. I'll talk! I'll talk! It's Jones, Mayor Jones! Jolly Jones? I can hardly believe it. Mr. Lug, if you're lying... No, I'm telling the truth, I swear I am! Mustn't breathe one word of this to anyone. I'll take care of this in my own way. Lila, come to the library with me. Say, do you really think she'd have gone through with it? Sure, that old lady's got a vicious streak in her. I just crawled up the coal chute. How very interesting. I had to tell her. You did? Who? The loony, old Mrs. Leonard. She snatched me. She kept me down in the cellar and she sweated it out of me about you. Mrs. Leonard, the mayor's busy. Hello. Hello, J.J. Oh, good morning, Harry. Don't you good morning me, Johnny Jones. Sign this. Sign what? Your resignation. <laughs> Still the same old love of Harry. Now, why should I? Because you're the higher up. You're the man behind these rackets. I am? Now what? Never mind, you sign that resignation, or I'll tell what I know on every street corner in the city. Say here, Harry. Whom do you think the public will believe? Me, who's been mayor of this town for 20 years? Or you, a meddlesome old crank? You'll find out soon enough. I'll shout what I know from the housetops. Johnny Jones, I'll see you behind prison bars. Get a load of this. What is it? Do you mean to say to put the old lady in the can? Why, this whole thing is unconstitutional! What are you getting excited about? Excited? Who's excited? I'm not oh, excited. sit down. Hey, we gotta do something. Come on, let's get going. You've got ten minutes. Some people to see you. Good afternoon, gentlemen. It's nice of you to drop in. You see, madam, crime don't ever pay. Me and the boys are all broke up about this lady. With good behavior, you ought to get out with 25 years. Come, come. It's always darkest before dawn. Here you tell her, Brains, I can't. We were talking to the district attorney and... Mrs. Leonard, you ain't got a chance. You didn't tell him about... You know who. I'm saving that. Well, we got desperate to tell you the truth and we spilled it all. What did he say? Well, he knew it all the time, but he couldn't do anything without evidence. Evidence? Gentlemen, you've got to get me out of here. You mean break it? We can't spring out of this joint. Oh, gee, Mrs. Leonard, why don't you pay your debt to society and go straight? Listen, you mugs. I've been taking advice from you with rather unfortunate results. From now on, I'm doing the thinking. See? Oh, yes, okay, okay, madam. Boys, this is what I want you to do. Hurry up! Hurry up! We gotta wait fast! Next, next. We're supposed to be waiting for the government. Mrs. Leonard, here's a package your chauffeur left for you. Uh, just a minute. I'd better see what's in it. Oh. Thank you.
Hey, don't forget to come back. Jail, Mrs. Leonard. Didn't you ever play hooky, Mr. Flanagan? Jesus, the cops. Tell him it was an accident. I can't do that. You do it or I'll discharge you. Flanagan. Yes, Riley. What's the matter? I thought I heard the bells ring. It was an accident, Riley. I must have done it walking into my sleep. With all her other trouble, what would Mrs. Leonard say if she knew her night watchman was a sleepwalker? Rest easy, Riley. I'll stay awake. <laughs> I'll count sheep. Make sure that's all you count. That's what I call finesse. for a can of nitro, and us on the honor system. Let me see. I need the telephone directory. And a pencil. Have you a pencil, Mr. Flanagan? an indelible pencil. That will do very nicely. Not a word of this to anyone, Mr. Flanagan. No, Mrs. Leonard. When we go, lock the doors. And then you can go back to sleep again. Come, gentlemen. with a Z's and go backwards. Phone oh, duck. Drive to Zambrosio's place. Do I make myself clear, Mr. Zambrosio? Yes, Mr. Leonard, lady. Then sign here, please. It's my receipt. <coughs> Bless you. Now hurry back to bed. You'll catch your death of cold. Coast clear, Thorndike. She you know, I'll shoot you with a bullet and she kill you with pneumonia. Like old Mrs. Leonard in that car. Well, ain't she in jail? She's liable to be anywhere. Come on. Hey, the cop! Step on the phone, Doc! Hurry up! They're gaining on us. There's nothing we can do. We gotta start shooting. Put that down! That ought to discourage them. They're still coming! What are we gonna do now? It's crazy of the catchers. Well, I give them the text.
the train. So you see, my dear, everything is turning out beautifully so far. I think you're swell, Mrs. Leonard. Third sale for the bed. You've got ten minutes. Mother, don't worry. I'll do everything possible to clear you. Frederick, I wouldn't do anything rash. But kidnapping, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of. Frederick, just between us, it's true. What? I'm absolutely guilty. Well, that doesn't make any difference. I don't care what you've done. I'll get the finest lawyers in the That's country. I'm loyal of you, Frederick, but couldn't you wait a few days? A few days? Not a minute. I'll have you bail out of here by tonight. Oh, but Frederick, you don't understand. You see, dear, I've done a lot of thinking here. I see it all now. And I've committed a crime. A crime for which I must pay the penalty. No. No, Mother, don't cry. Thank you, my boy. Thank you, my boy. But don't you see, I must make amends for what I've done. Don't take that away from me. Oh, Mother, I can't let you stay in jail for the rest of your life. There's only one thing you can do to make my last few remaining years endurable. If I only knew that you were happy, you and Lila. I know you love each other and I drove you apart. Please, for my sake. I want you to get married. I'd like to do it, what you say, Mother, but Lila and I... Why, Lila's mad about you, aren't you, Lila? Certainly, I'm mad about you. Well, then who's that man you were with at the Black Kitten? Why, he was well, only... That was the man I snatched. I used Lila as a decoy. You... You used Lila as a de... Oh, what a fool I am. Lila, darling. I'd like to be alone now, please. Mother, don't worry. I'm going to do something about this right away. Marry him right away and don't let him go out nights. I'll drop you boys at the district attorney's house. Bring him to me. Here we are, boys. Hurry. To the bank, Thorndike. We want to see the DA. I'm sorry, sir, but he's retired for the night. What's the meaning of this? On your feet. We're taking it to the boss. She needs you. I can't do anything. She's got to stay in jail. It's absolutely impossible to get her out. That's a matter of opinion which we won't discuss now. All we say is you're coming with us. I'm up to my neck in this thing already. Now clear out. I'm tired. Sorry, Chief, but we got our orders. You men are special deputies and take your orders from me. Then I resign. Me too. We quit. From now on, we're working for the boss exclusive. Here. What's going on here? Come on, come on. You can't get away with this. We're doing it. I'll get you, man. Come on, get going. Never mind. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't have so much to talk about it. Mrs. Leonard. Good evening, young man. Mayor Jones's safety deposit box. You can't do that. Wasn't kidnapping bad enough? This time you've gone too far. Committing a crime under the very eyes of the district attorney. Oh, hush. Give me a match. Lady, you got a real talent. Here's your evidence, young man. Johnny Jones' share of Mr. Watson's collections from the cleaners and dyers. How do you know? Because I marked each bill with an indelible pencil before I gave it to the merchants to pay off with. See? Yes, but will the tradesmen swear to that? Here are their signatures acknowledging receipt of the money. Great. This is as good as an affidavit. I'll get right to work. 
All right, boys. A couple of you come with me. The rest of you go out and pull in the Watson mob. Don't let anybody countermand my orders. That's all. Now for the big shot. Do you take this woman to be your lawfully wedded wife? I do. Do you take this man to be your lawful wedded husband? Arrest that man. Mother! What does this mean? Johnny Jones, I always said you'd come to no good end. I demand an explanation. We've got you dead to rights, J.J. Here's a warrant arresting you for conspiracy, extortion, and everything else in the book. Oh, you were being married. And in my bridal veil. I clean them up of her heart just like a new. How much did you charge them? Oh, the old price. One dollar. A seven to five. Come along, Your Honor. Johnny Jones, you come right back here and finish what you were doing. Where was I? Well, I was just about to take this man to be my lawful wedded husband. And I do. Go ahead, Johnny. I pronounce you man and wife. Oh, wait a minute. You're supposed to be in jail, at least temporarily. You are quite right. I owe it to your children. Their grandmother should not be a fugitive from justice. Thorndike to the jail. <laughs> <laughs> 